Uh, this particular building was built in 1880, and we'll come back and revisit this building a little bit later on, but it was built by a man by the name of Moses Faith. And uh, Moses Faith was a very prominent man of Beavertown, perhaps the second most prominent man that Beavertown ever produced. The first most prominent man was Nur Middlesworth. And right now we're going to go to the west. We had several schools before this present school that we just were at. And uh, we had schools on the north side of town, which is this side, schools on the south side of town. And the one on the north side was about right here. And uh, the school on the south side is about where Shirley's flowers used to be, Shade Mountain Flowers. And they used to meet up on the Market Street and have snowball battles and even occasionally a fist fight the north side school against the south side school. But the north side school also served as a meeting house and uh, it was a log structure and uh, <clears throat> people would gather here at night and it also served as a church on, on Sundays until 1851. Now all of this land from, uh, well, this is called the Union Cemetery, and it was a union of the Reformed Church and the Evangelical or the Lutheran Church. That was this church was built also by Moses Spaeth in 1851. My great great grandfather Henry Kern donated the land for the churchyard for the church. He also gave land for a school and a playground with a caveat that as long as these things are used for those purposes that it may remain but if it's ever used for any other purpose the land will revert back to the family or, it's, or the heirs or assigns. My grandmother Lily Kern Wagner was the last person to sign all and that granted that gave this Reform St. Paul's Reformed Church, the right to the land in which they sit, and a Union Cemetery. This is a Union Cemetery of not only the original Reformed Church and the Lutheran Church, but the Evangelical Church was also invited in, and there is an organization called the Union Cemetery Association, which has representatives from all three churches that still maintain this cemetery. That cemetery is a privately owned cemetery, and it was started by James Daddy Klein in 1914, and uh, it's now controlled by the Saylor family, and Paul Saylor is the president, and other members of the Saylor family are the other officers and board of directors. So, uh, as I say, this church was built in 1851 by Moses Spake. Now, those of you who were on one of my other tours may recall that Moses Spaeth built the Oregon House Hotel, which is where the beer distributor is now, in 1845. So uh, he, he, he built that in 1845, he built this in 1851. Then in 1880, he built the, the Lutheran Church, the <coughs> Lutheran and Reformed Church here uh, had a dispute and the, part of the Lutherans decided they would build their own church and that congregation moved over there. The other remaining Lutheran uh, group remained with the Reformed group and this became St. Paul's Reformed Church. Uh, for a while it became part of the United Church of Christ but now is back to being a Reformed Church. Uh, the Lutheran Church built, consolidated with the Spring Township Beaver Springs Lutheran Church, and now is the Beaver Church, the Beaver Lutheran Church, as you all know, midway between Beaver Town and Beaver Springs. <clears throat> when it was sold, the uh, it became a warehouse for Mrs. Bojalad. The Bojalad family bought it, and on the second floor was a historical society archive and it deteriorated. She didn't keep the building up until Davy Jones bought it and rehabilitated it by putting a new roof on, putting a new 
steeple on, putting new windows in at great expense. And he, his intentions were to have a community center there, a community art theater, uh, a live performing art because there is a stage. He bought the curtains from the old Beaver Adams School and his intentions were to have community theater and have musical sessions. And while there was a group in from Hollywood, which I was part of, uh, I, that is, I was part of the filming that they did, on the stage there, I reenacted when C. Austin Miles came to town in 1925. C. Austin Miles was a great hymn writer, and uh, probably you've all heard one of his great hymns. He wrote a whole group. One of my favorites is Dwelling in Beulah Land, but uh, I think the second or third ranked favorite hymn is one that he wrote, and in 1925 when he wrote it, he published it as part of a new little booklet, and he came to Beavertown on the train and stayed in the Central Hotel, and that evening came up here on the second floor and presented his own version of his newest hymn, which went something like this. <clears throat> I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses I'm sure you've all heard that. It's entitled In the Garden. He sold these little books which he autographed for 25 cents and that way paid for his tour. He went from place to place to place, singing his songs, playing the piano, singing his songs, and selling his little books. And C. Austin Miles is enshrined as one of the great hymn writers in the Gospel, country, uh, the gospel Hall of Fame, and, and it's rather interesting that from that stage is where he did it, and I recreated it just a couple of years ago. Now, <clears throat> this particular church all three churches at Christmas time had pageants. The Lutheran church was always biblical. They always had uh, shepherds with the uh, Arab dress and canes and it was always Christ related. The evangelical church was usually a musical event. But the reformed church was always comedy. We had high, high comedy. And even though the evangelical church was very musical, especially Rudy Grimm, he was a professional singer, was with the Chautauqua in the 1920s that traveled all over the country. We, in, in the Reformed Church, put on comedies but used our musical talent as actors. We had Eugene Blee. Eugene Blee and Jack Bolt, but let me just dwell on Eugene Blee for a moment. Eugene Blee went into the United States Army and he was in the U.S. Army Band. After that, he graduated from the University of Cincinnati and became assistant conductor of the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra and was a guest trumpeter and cor played trumpet and cornet, was a guest star with every symphony orchestra in the world. <clears throat> he was a magnificent talent. He's still living down in Florida, although he has Alzheimer's and can't remember anything. He's approximately <coughs> my age. <clears throat> and Jack Folk was a great piano player with big bands. Uh, may, he started in Sunbury, but he traveled with other big bands, a great musical talent. And we would have Jack on the piano and Eugene on the trumpet or cornet at many of our services. It was a delight to have this high talent. We recognize it with high talent even then. <clears throat> Uh, but the kids would, we kids would have the advantage of being able to go to three Christmas plays and at, Chris, at Christmas time you're on vacation and you're looking forward to Santa Claus. So that was just uh, sort of feathers in our cap. It was just a fun, delightful time. If you can imagine, just visualize, there was a house very similar to this except it had a porch right there where the asphalt begins. and right attached to the house was a small building, a little bit smaller than that garage or barn there. It was a, in fact, it was only about half that size. And a Mr. Bingaman owned the land. He owned all this land. He gave the land for this church. Uh, this church originally was the Bethesda Church. And in 1867, the uh, 
evangelical uh, association bought the church because the Bethesda group had a split. There were some that, <laughs> that wanted to do something else and another one wanted to keep the church and they fought and finally one group went into church with shotguns and said to the other group, you will not enter here and then they failed to pay their taxes and failed to pay their responsibilities and so the sheriff came and removed them and sold the church and the Evangelical Association bought it and ever since then it's been an uh, EUB, that was the Evangelical and United Brethren and then it became a United Methodist Church and of course it had no trouble after 1867 whatsoever. 